Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to download, install and use Actions in Photoshop. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's have a look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. This is the original image that we're going to be working on. It's one that I shot recently in Australia and it's really quite a nice little image. And what I'm going to do is to show you how you can find, download, install and use an action that with one click will turn the original image into something that looks like this. Now while I like the resulting image, I think it's probably just a bit too much. So I'm going to show you how you can blend these two images together so that you can get a result that's a little bit of the action created version and a little bit of the original image. So now you've seen how we can use actions in Photoshop. Let's go and find a set of actions to use. Well I found this particular set which I kind of like the look of. You could use them on flowers but you could use them probably on other things as well. So this is the action set I'm going to download. So I'm just going to go down here and be really, really careful about what it is that I'm going to download because this here is the link to actually download this action. There's a whole lot of other stuff happening here, but this is the link I need to click. So I'm just going to click here and I'm going ahead and downloading this set of actions. Now these are as appropriate for use on the Mac as they are on the PC. So I'm just going to click show in folder and that will show them inside my downloads folder. So let's just bring that across here and here is the set of actions. So I'm going to double click on that and I'm opening a tool to open up my RAR file. This download file is an RAR file so you'll need a special extractor to get it and the one I'm using is Express Zip but you'll find that other extraction tools will be able to handle RAR files. And the file I want is this Blossom Photoshop Actions but of of course I should also read here as to what the requirements are for using this action. So I'm going to click on the action file itself, that's the ATN file and I'm going to extract it. So I just want to extract selected but I want to be careful about where I extract it to because if I'm really careful I can just send it exactly where it needs to go. So what I'm looking for is my folder, that's my user folder which is Helen obviously. Then I'm going to App Data, Roaming, Adobe and what I'm looking for then is my version of Adobe software. So I'm just going to go down here to find Photoshop. Now the Photoshop version I'm using for this particular video is Photoshop CC 2014. So I want to open 2014 and then I want to go down to the Presets folder and then I want to go down to Actions. So that's one here. And provided I select that, I'm going to send my ATN action file on extraction right to where it needs to be. So I'm just going to click to extract it here. And then I'll click extract. And now it's been extracted and the folder is going to open for me. So this is my actions folder. Helen, App Data, Roaming, Adobe, Adobe Photoshop CC 2014, Presets, Actions. You can see that there's already an action in there that I used earlier. So once I've done that, I can just close everything down because I don't need any of this any longer. And I don't need my browser either. So I'm just going to close that. So let's go and bring back Photoshop and let's go and get an image to use. So here I am back in Photoshop and I have an image open that I want to use this particular action on. So I'm going to choose Window and then Actions because I want to open up the Actions palette. And all of these actions that are here are the default actions that are shipped with Photoshop. So I'm going to start by adding a new action set. So I'm going to click here on Create New Set and I'm going to give this set a name. And I'm just going to call this Free Actions. So that I know that these are actions that I've downloaded free from the internet and that they're not mine. So that makes it clear that my actions would be separate again. So I'm just going to click on the Free Actions. I'm going to add in the action that I just installed. So I'm opening up the little flyout menu here and choose Load Actions. Now because I put the actions into the correct place, the place where Photoshop expects them to be, I can now just click on the action here and just click Load. Now I had to do that because Photoshop has been open the whole time that I've been recording this video. If it had not been and if I had just opened Photoshop after I installed that action, it would be down here. So it would be in this list. 
These are the actions that come with Photoshop and then these are the actions that are in that special folder that we just put our actions into. But we're not seeing them because Photoshop hasn't been closed and reopened, but that's the only reason why not. So this is the action set that I downloaded and there are a heap of actions here. There's quite a lot of them. Now they're of varying use and I know that this one's probably not going to be the one I use but let's just click on that first action and then I'm going to click to run it. And it's run on the image and you can see that this is the result and it's less than satisfactory for this particular image. So I'm going to go back to the history panel here and I made a few changes to the image. I just did a little bit of colour work on it before I actually started this video. So I want to go back to this point. This was the point at which we started. So I'm just going to click on that right now. So that's removed the effect of that action and now let's go and try another action. Now I know that this naturally one looks pretty good so I'm just going to select it and run it. Because I kind of like that effect for this particular image, but let's say that we didn't. Let's go back to the history panel and select the last state of the image where we liked the look of it. And let's go back to actions. So just click on actions and let's try naturally too. And this is an effect that I really quite like. So I'm going to stick with this naturally too. But I'm going to say to myself, yeah, that's fine but I would kind of like to blend it into the original image. So I had a bit of this action and a bit of the rest of the image. So let's just go back to the history panel. Let's return the image to what it was and let's add a new duplicate layer. So I'm just going to duplicate this layer. So I've got selected the copy layer and let's see if the action is just going to work on that layer for us. So I'm just going to run it again. Well the answer to this is that this action does not do it. So you want to be really careful with actions to make sure that you understand what they do. I would never work on an original image with an action just in case it saved itself back over the original. But you can see here that even though I had a duplicate layer, the action has just got rid of that. So question, how are we going to solve the problem? Well, we can solve the problem by creating a new layer and dumping into that new layer exactly what the image looked like when we last had it the way we wanted it to look before we ran the action on it. So I'm going back to the history panel and this is what I like. Let's just go to that. That's the image that we started with. Now I don't want to go back to that history state but I want to set this little button on here. This is a button that I can click in any of these states and what it's doing is it's setting the art history brush at that point as being the target. Now the reason I want to do that is I want to fill this layer with this content and I can do that now if I hold down Control and Alt and press Backspace. On the Mac that's going to be Command and Option and Delete. So now I've got my original image on the top layer and my action version of the image on the bottom layer. I'm going to just discard this lock icon, just dump it onto the trash. So now I have two regular layers and I'm going to switch the order of them. So I'm going to put the action version layer on top of the original image. And if I want to blend the two together, one of the simplest ways of blending the two together is just adjusting down the opacity. So I'm bringing back a little bit of the underlying image but not the whole lot. So this is the underlying image, this is the original and then this is the version that has the action applied to it but the opacity setting is set to 59%. So I've got like 59% opaque here so we're seeing a bit of the underlying image through it just enough to not have it really really foggy but to give it a really interesting look. So a couple of things with actions, never use your original image, always make sure that you're using a copy so that if the action behaves really badly and for example saves the image back on top of itself you haven't lost your original. And you know now how to get back the original image onto a layer and you might do that if for example like these actions it results in a flattened layer and you want to be able to get back the original image so you can do some blending of some sort. 
There are plenty of actions out there on the web. There are just like thousands and thousands of them. Lots of them are for fee actions, but there are a lot of good free ones as well. I suggest that you just look into the actions that have a look that you like, and then you can load them into Photoshop. Now, for example, in this set, if we didn't like soft pink tones, and if we thought we were never going to use soft pink tones, we can just discard that. So we can just get rid of the things that we don't like out of this set and keep the ones that actually speak to us. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com for where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications, including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.